What's going on? Welcome back to the ZSP Garage. Hope you guys are all doing well today. So in this video, we got a buy one, get one free deal for you guys going on. So we have the 65 Impala, which is sitting right here. The master mechanic as well. Hello there. So we got that first and we're going to show you the progress that we've been making on it. And then we're going to head back into our garage and show you the progress that has been going on with the 65 Nova. There's quite a bit going on in this video with all the progress over the past, uh, month month and a half or so on the nova and then over the past couple weeks here on the 65 impala from after the last video so let's get into all this we're going to start with the 65 impala and show the show the nova later on so let's go on right now we're back here my sister's 60, 65 impala just doing some some finishing up we're, we're doing i got the brake the rod for the brake pedal to the booster we're going to try to get these brakes done we're going to put the rod on we just have to make the line for the rear. You can see how it used to come into this T when it's a single reservoir. So we're gonna take it out of there. We have a plug to plug the block to separate to the rear. And then the new line is quarter inch coming out of the master cylinder and the old is 316. So we just have a reducer here. We're gonna do a new union to quarter to 316 reducer. So we're gonna make a line for the rear. So we'll get the brakes finished. We're going to put, I got, so we put our sway bar mounts on. So the sway bar will be finished up. We're gonna get that done. Stuff for the fuel system. We got a new filter. We're gonna mount it in the back. It's a new new fuel load, fuel fuel line. So we're gonna blow it out. We're gonna take it off in the back. Make sure there's no debris in it. Put the filter in the back. New new hose up front. So we're gonna get the fuel system done. Hopefully start it again. We got some more training fluid. We're gonna get the training fluid topped off. So we're just finishing up. A lot of little picky odds and ends. And we'll show you the line after it's done. We showed it enough lines. I don't want to get you worn out on making lines. So we'll show that when it's done also. And then, yeah, we'll just show the progress along the way. So right now I'm gonna get the rod in it and then I'm gonna start making the brake line. Also, I got um, an adapter for the carburetor for the banjo bolt to a dash six. Take it out here, you can get a better look at it. It just has this three eighths nipple, which I don't like how this turns out. And if you can see down here, it's kind of hard. The hard line is crammed into the lower hose. So I don't like that either. I don't want it to be poking, rubbing through that hose later. So I want to put the fitting on there. And we got a piece of braided. I want to put on there. So, so I want to put this line on for the fuel, but that's after we get it running and get the train fluid topped off. So we got our brake line done, both of them now. So now we're going to bleed the master cylinder. We got to bleed the master cylinder first before we can bleed the brakes. Cause you'll never get, I shouldn't say never, but it'll take you forever and a day to get there out of system if you don't bleed the master cylinder first. So now we gotta take the lines back off. Kind of a, a little bit of a messy, messy process. It's kind of a pain. So then you take these little adapters, put them in the master, take your cap off. Then you just get a piece of vacuum hose and you put these up into the fluid. So when you pump it, then you're gonna pump it slow. Pump it, it pushes the air out, and being it's in the fluid, it sucks the fluid back in. So you do it until all the bubbles are done. So you have to have an assistant pump the pedal for you. So we're gonna fill this reservoir up, we'll top off both reservoirs. So now we got the reservoir, both reservoirs full. We're gonna stick the hoses in the, submerge it in the fluid, pump the pedal slow. So go ahead and pump the pedal. You wanna pump it all the way down and all the way up slow. And you can see how all the bubbles bleeds all the air out of the system. All right, so you do that, you get all the air out of the master cylinder. So now this is kind of the messy part. So you gotta take your hoses off that's full of fluid now and take these um, adapters out and put your lines in. So you're gonna wanna put a, a rag underneath it to catch it. So I just use a, a normal, I'll just use a shop towel. You wanna have something underneath it to absorb all the fluid, especially if you painted the master cylinder as fast as possible. I'll put your line in, wipe that brake fluid off there. Don't let it stay. No, none of your reservoirs ever go empty. You wanna make sure that they're full from now on. You don't wanna get any air in there. And now you can go on to bleeding your wheels. So it's best to start at the furthest point so the passenger rear, top them both off. This is your rear, this is your front. So you want to start at the passenger rear. Then you want to do the driver's rear then the passenger front and the driver's front. So you might have to do it a couple times just to get air. Start there, do that a couple times. Go over here, go over there, go over here and do it, rotate around to get all the air out. So we're going to start back corner. You just want to have somebody, we're going to do a pressure, pressure bleed this time. So we're going to have our assistant pump up the pedal about three or four times. Hold pressure on it, and we're gonna open each bleeder up, bleed the air out. And just remember, before you bleed the brakes, make sure you put your cap on there, because it will, when you pump the pedal, it will shoot up fluid. So make sure you put your cap on there. You don't need to snap it all the way, but I just normally put the clamps over so they're you know, pushing down on it. But if you wanted to, you can you know, put, push them all the way on. So before we show you 
us bleeding the brakes, I just wanted to show you that we put the sway bar mounts on. Sway bar is good. So we almost got the almost got the front suspension done. So next we're gonna do the radius arms. We gotta get bolts. I'm gonna put new bolts in it. We're bolts to the control arm. So I need to put those on next. And then I need to double check this for fitment because we have a different spindle. In instructions it says you have to grind it a little bit. So I just gotta check that before I get those powder coated. But next we're gonna do the radius arms. Get that bolted up. And then we'll get the inner and outer tie rods. So we're almost, almost there. Almost ready to line it and get it driving, man. So we're on to the last one. We got all the other ones bled. And I just want to remind you that a little trick, you did the same hose that you used when you bled the master cylinder. So you can just put your wrench on there and then you can put your hose over the bleeder. So when you crack it, it doesn't squirt all over your caliper and everything. You can direct where it's, you know, you put it into a rag or into a pan. So you can control where the fluid's coming out because it's gonna be under pressure. So just a little, little trick to keep in mind when you're bleeding your brakes. All right, so we got the last one bled. Just so you know, you wanna pump it. It doesn't matter really the amount. Three, three pumps is a pretty good amount. Um, you can do it more or less, but you wanna hold the pressure because you wanna push the air out of the system. So that's why you're pumping it. You're building up a pressure. You're holding the pressure on the system. And then when you open the bleeder, you're forcing the air out of the system. So that's why that's what you do it. That's what you're doing when you're pressure bleeding a system. So that'd be that's it for the brakes. We got them all bled. So next we'll get the shocks put on it and the rest of this thing finished up. It's been a little bit. We're back with you, Impala. Last thing, last time we we're here, we just got done bleeding the brakes. So we want to come back and finish up some more more stuff. So we got the fuel system all finished up. This is a complete the fuel line is all factory original. And then I just took the line off in the back. It just has a little short piece from the tank to the line. And I took that off and this was all off and I blew it out just to make sure it was all clear. Because before when we were trying to run it, we we're having an issue with it sucking fuel up, but all the hoses were cracked. So I wanted to put the filter in the back, but being that there's just a little piece of flex line, there wasn't enough room and I didn't want to shorten up the original line. So I put the filter up front. And then after I did that, we changed the shocks. You can see this old junk. Who knows how long? I think it won't even come back out. We put some nice Bilsteins on it. Come back, come back. See if I can give you a good look at it. Let's check it out. Gonna have to do a little bit of maintenance to this rear end though. It's got a little bit of leak at the cover. The pinion seal. So we're gonna have to do something with that before we get driving it, but it's almost there. We gotta take these wheels off. We gotta measure the back spacing so we can get the right wheels. That's all we're gonna do on the back for right now. Just put the shocks on it. And then we wanna finish up these front end. So now we're gonna lift the front of it up and we're gonna put the radius arms on it. All right, so we got the front suspension. Other than the steering, front suspension's done. We got the, why did I just forget the name of them? Arms. Radius arm. Got the whole front suspension done. We just put the radius arms on. It's a little bit of a fight. You kind of got to pry the lower control arm back to get the bolts to line up. It's a little bit of a bear. You can kind of fight in the spring a little bit. But so now we're going to lower it on the ground. I want to start it. Hopefully I can suck fuel up now that we got all the cracked hoses out of the fuel system. So we have a good fuel system now. We're gonna start it. I wanna <laughs> top off the training fluid. So now we're gonna lower it on the ground, put the tires back on it and start it up. All right, so now we're gonna fire it up. We're gonna pull it out, but I think the tires will not agree with me because there's nothing holding them in place. So we're gonna start it, fire it up and um, fill the training fluid. So we have to give it a little prime. A little prime. Must have ran out of gas last time. See, we got a nice new air filter and a new top, though. It'll look pretty. Just needs a little sports drink. Fill the bowl up. Jeez, man. Should have ran longer than that. Well, our fine automobile. The only fuel line that we haven't replaced yet from the fuel pump to the carburetor is now leaking. You can see it dripping. See right there. So we don't know what's going on here. We got a, looks like it's way in up here. Maybe it's from right here. Uh, it looks like it's right here. I think if we take this clamp off, we can shorten this line a little bit and still, still get, we got fuel up to the, we got fuel up to the filter though. Got fuel in our filters, that's good. We just got a little leak here. So let's shorten that line a little bit. Oh yeah, see that? Right right there. Got a nice, nice hole in it. Shorten it up a little bit. We are gonna replace this line. Just haven't got to it yet. We're gonna do that braided line that we showed we showed before. See if there's any more fuel leaks.
Same one thing, it's another, man. Now it's like the stinking needle and seed. Just take the needle and seed out and see what's going on up here. See, we got gas to it, see? For some reason, it's not filling up the carburetor. Got no squirter. Seems like the diaphragm is stuck. Got no accelerator pump. Well, let's try it again. That's why it won't rev, no accelerator pump. Must have just came out. Well, it wasn't really revving last time it was running though either. Still got nothing. So what, what I was doing here, because I took the float or the kneeling seat out, which is a float level. So it has a mechanical pump, so it has to be running in order to set the float. So you take the, I took the screw out here on the float on the bowl, and then I can set the float level from the kneeling seat. So I have to do it with it running. That's why you saw gas coming out of there. But I'm having an issue with the accelerator pump. It seems like it's bound up, like it's seized from sitting or something. It's not. So I'm gonna have to get a new accelerator pump, replace that and see what's going on with that. So that's why it kind of seems like it's so labored to rev right now because it doesn't get that initial squirt like it needs to. So I gotta check that out first before I worry about setting the timing and anything else. And then I still have to hook up the TV cable before we can drive it. So we'll get that straightened out, get these last little odds and ends done so we can get this thing aligned, get it going, man, get it on the road, get it registered, everything else after that. Come back, check it out, we're almost there. So. We are back in the garage. That was, that's all you get, the 65 and Paula. That's all you get. So now we're gonna check out the Nova and see what we got going on. The master mechanic has a few things that he's been working on over the past month-ish. It's been taking quite a while to do the metal working. So it's to be expected. You know, metal working is a lot of work. We're gonna get into it right now. I'm gonna get with him and we're gonna see um, what's been going on with it. We're back here with the 65 Nova. Gonna do a little update, show you what's going on. We're working on the floors, stretching the wheel well, mini tub in it on the driver's side here. Got the drivers pretty much done. I just got to do a fill in piece here and over here. But the floor, I mean, metal work takes, well, it takes me forever. It takes a long time, it's a lot of work. I have to add reinforcements in the back so it goes underneath. So these get welded in, spot welded underneath or the seat belt bolts to it. So I still need to add those on the driver's side and there's a brace underneath it right here, but for the most part, it's all welded in. And you see on these pedals, how if they're all the way up, the brake pedal is super high and higher than the clutch. So I need to cut the stop off of there and I'm gonna bring it down so they're both the same height. So that's what I'm gonna be doing next. So you're not reaching, so you're, when you lift it off the gas pedal, you don't have to go up super high to hit the brake. And then I'm gonna mount the PCM and stuff right here. So I need to work on that here next. So I still have stuff to do on the driver's side before I go over to the, but the passenger's gonna be the same, same deal. It's the whole floor. And then I'm just gonna put the original tunnel back in it. So this is gonna wind up getting reused. And then I have a part of the tunnel that's supposed to go with this tranny, but it's gonna need some work too, some, some massaging. So I gotta finish that. But I'm gonna do this side first, so then I'll worry about the tunnel. I have like 12 inches, I think, a hair over 12 inches of wheel well now. So I could fit, we're putting a 295, 30, 18. And if you see, I got the tire and wheel. It's on in a nine and a half inch wheel. So it kind of bows the side a little bit. And you can see I got plenty of room side to side. So tire's not gonna rub once it's centered in the wheel well. But it's gonna come down probably, the wheel well is probably gonna be right at the wheel. So it's probably gonna come down probably about almost an inch more. So these are the center caps. They're running on here. It's just like a replica of a rally wheel. 
So it's gonna look like just an oversized rally wheel. Stocker, but it makes you look twice. You're like, wait a minute, that's a little bit bigger. We're getting there, we're getting progress. If you look in the trunk, you can see the back side of the wheel, wheel wheel. We just put the, I had to shorten up the trunk hinge bracket and just welded it back onto the inner tub. And here you see the inner fenders. Those are gonna go off to powder coat here pretty quick. We dropped some stuff off, so I don't like to do a whole bunch at once because it seemed to get lost. So once we pick those parts up, I'm gonna drop off the inner fenders. A couple other parts get powder coated. Doing the bumper brackets and hinge brackets and stuff right now. That's where the battery is gonna be mounted. I'm building a tray for it. It's gonna be held down right there. This is the tunnel that needs a little massaging. It has a shifter on it, so it kind of holds it up, but it's a little, it's cute. That's next, so. Once we get this side all the way finished, we'll go on to that. So that's pretty much what we've been doing on the floors. We had some stuff come in on the engine, so we need to do some headers. I got the bracket welded on here for the brake line on both sides. So I'm gonna run the brake lines on the, on the inside of the frame because the wheel wells, the inner fenders go here. So I didn't wanna to have to have a hole to go through them. So I'm gonna go on the back side. So the brake line will come out here to flex the caliper. I got the flanges showed up. We're doing inch and three quarter headers on this thing. I'm gonna build the headers. And then I gotta build a set of headers. But on this side, I'm waiting for the parts for the steering. Cause you can see that now it's a front steer with the rack right here. So I need to have another Heim joint, and then I'll probably come off of here with a rod end, or I mean a U-joint, and then I'll have a Heim joint here to hold to support the shaft. So when I do the headers, I gotta have that on here so I could build the headers around. It's gonna be a little tight on this side. You think there's room, but after you put the steering shaft in there, it's gonna take, take up a lot of the space. So I'm waiting on, I got the shaft, I'm just waiting on the, the two U-joints. So this is our little, Header kit we're gonna use just all mild steel. So when we get done, we're gonna we're just gonna paint it black, and then we're gonna V-band the collectors. So it's three, so it's inch and three quarters to a three-inch exhaust, and then it's gonna be all so a three-inch collector. And then it's all gonna be three-inch exhaust. So we're gonna V-band it. So on the passenger side here, it's gonna be a little bit easier for the exhaust. And you can see inch and, inch and three quarters is plenty big enough for these exhaust ports. This side would be easier to do you know, on the steering shaft, but we are gonna be adding AC. So we're gonna run the, the C5 AC compressor. So we use the same, pretty much a stock setup. The belt goes off this pulley here. So we don't have to change the whole configuration of the drive. Obviously that's gotta have a lot come off of it cause it's all gonna be on the inside, but universal header kit. We've been doing some metal work on the firewall. I filled in the two. I'm gonna fill this one in too. It's just the engine's in the way because we're doing the aftermarket AC. So I'm probably gonna put the lines over here so I filled in the two for the original heater core and then I filled in the holes that were in there um, where the nipples used to come through for the, the dash pad. And I just have the sound detonating that you kind of roll out and that's what I'm gonna put on the firewall for sound detonating so I don't need to have all these holes. I gotta change the mount still on the engine. We're just gonna run in factory injectors, the LS3. Injectors is 42 pounds. So we're gonna put the injectors in it and the fuel rails on it. So then I can determine when I do pull the engine out where I'm gonna run the fuel lines, cause that's a sniper. So these are just the, the rails that come with the sniper intake. So we'll put the injectors in it. And this fuel line for the crossover. I'm probably gonna change this fuel line. I'll probably use the fittings. I'll probably get a different braid. This is like a low quality braided line. I might change the configuration a little bit on how it comes into the rails. We'll see, we'll get that far. First, we're gonna get the injectors in it, get the rails on it. Then we can determine where we're gonna run the fuel lines, where they're gonna fit the best. Cause I'm trying to avoid putting any holes in the inner fenders at all. I don't really want it on the firewall. I'm trying to keep the firewall as clean as possible. So that's pretty much what we got going on with the Nova. Get it worked out, get the metal work done and everything figured out, placement and all that. All right, everyone, I hope you enjoyed the video of the 65s, both of them, and just some update progress on what's been going on with them. So if you liked it, please go down below, hit the like button and also hit the subscribe button if you are new around here. I think I said that in the beginning of the video, but what do you got to say, Master Mechanic? What do you got? Put these injectors in, you come on back. Come on back, check this thing out. Hit that. It's a good video right there. Don't forget the like button. See you guys later. All right, everybody. Take care.